Hello. Hello, Scott. How the devil are you? <laughs> uh, not too bad here in the south of France, if I can tell you honestly. Oh, why? Is it not, you're not particularly, you're not enjoying yourself? No, I'm loving it. Oh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, and yourself? Yeah, yeah, fine, thank you. Yeah, I'm in the I'm in the middle of England, so not quite as glamorous, but you know. Well, how come you're in the South of France anyway? Are you delivering artwork? Uh, I had to come over and organize some artworks for the um, exhibition in Germany later this month, uh, uh -huh. later next month. And um, I'm just taking a couple of days off here and stuff. A friend has an apartment here, so I, have a, I basically have a free trip and I've got my dog with me who's passed out on the couch uh, <laughs> over <laughs> there from chasing pigeons all morning. Um, so yeah, it's just, a, it's just a um, nice break, you know, and you know, the, these days, if you've got your computer, you can actually, I mean, you can do a lot of things. I can't paint with Picasso, no. but I can do a lot of other things. So I maybe it's good to it with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. What are the, what are the laws regarding transporting pigs compared to pets, dogs? Well, well, it's quite actually, it's all ironic, as we all know, it's very, it's, it's impossible to bring a pig from uh, Africa into the EU because of swine flu. They don't look at Picasso as an answer, they look at her as a production pig. And with all the diseases and stuff in the, in the agricultural industry, it's just, it's just, um, yeah, you can't do it. It's too risky for, for an outbreak. It's really sad. Pretty sad. No, I think, you know what, I think it's quite good that, I mean, put it this way, I've definitely considered bringing her over. She would have a wonderful container with her own PA. She would have a TV screen, a bunch of hay, a bunch of carrots. She would, she would fly like like business class on Red Bull, okay? But, um, um, you know, so I think, I don't think I would run into any sort of criticism on it, but, you know, I also, it's, it's, I've always said it's sanctuary first, it's mission first, and um, while I think it'd be some fantastic PR, I think she's just as happy being in at the sanctuary and not having to worry about you know moving up and down or whatever so it is what it is i can't change it and on the basis that you're not there as her what do you actually what do you call yourself in the because i've noticed that the way you um describe picasso now is picasso stroke joanne lefson which i think is which is right because it is a collaborative thing but what what would you class yourself as in the in the realm of that process are you just co-collaborators is that it just yeah well you know it's interesting you say that it depends who i'm really speaking to because i'm i can be classified as many different things exactly as you mentioned so if i'm talking from an artistic point of view um and also actually from a, a symbolic point of view i like the word collaboration because mm. It's definitely, it's, it's, it's a, a human working with a non-human animal and what great things can come when we actually collaborate with nature, okay? Mm. So that's sort of the one story. Um, and of course, uh, um, it, it really is a collaboration because Picasso only paints when I'm with her and how we develop an artwork is definitely a collaboration. If I wasn't involved with the process, she would still paint, but it would just mm. be a whole bunch of painted, paint probably going off the canvas and things so we work together to achieve what we achieve um but on a lighter note i say i'm, I'm very much her personal assistant i'm her secretary <laughs> i'm i'm her i'm her uh maid in a way i mean yeah, i yeah. set up everything for her i clean up after her i cook for her uh, i obviously have one or two teammates that assist with this mm. i can't take full credit for that um she gets the occasional massage um so she really lives like the queen and we all run around for her so i guess i'm a jack of all trades but um on the higher mission we we, we collaborate together to inspire people to look at our relationship with mm -hmm. with uh, farm animals in a completely inspired and different way in order to obviously create a more sustainable and kinder world for for actually everyone um just one thing um i am recording at the moment i didn't pre-warn you that i would press the recording button because i was just That's panicking fine. that would have this amazing interview and i would forget to press it so i have pressed it so everything you've just said has been has been recorded um, um, no, I can see you for not telling me. <laughs> no, okay, sorry, joke. But... Um, so, just just on on the um, aspect of of painting with Picasso, how have you? Because uh, I I saw I was watching um, a video that you put up about the NFTs and and whatnot, um, and you kind of said that the, your um, You've always had this, you had a grand scheme from beginning that you're going to have a farm and a pig and the pig would be called Picasso and you'd make 
paintings with Picasso. So it all seemed like it was a you'd like did a, a, a mood board of of what you wanted to achieve and ultimately get to it. But I mean, prior to that um, vision, if you like, had you worked with other animals before and painted with animals before or created artwork with animals before? Or is this just like a one off? No, never. I'd never. It's not my profession to uh, to, to 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 train animals and you know work with animals. Well, I've yeah. always had a strong bond to animals. I've always had an adopted dog in my life. Um, mm. Animals have definitely shaped my life, and I I've been inspired. and And I'm I'm a, I'm a better person for having animals in my life. Mm. So I've always related. I've always related well with animals and they've always just I've just always had a connection with them mm -hmm. yeah the angle with Picasso was you know um it you know one has visions and and goals and dreams of, of doing things it doesn't mean that they all go to plan so you know before I started the sanctuary I knew that I well I knew I wanted to start a sanctuary and I thought you know how do you how do you actually um make people aware and become conscious of something that's really horrific that's happening all around us but that nobody really wants to think about mm. or know about even though i think everybody kind of knows something's wrong with the industry but i mean let's face it who wants to watch you know horrible images of of animals getting slaughtered or in factory farms it's a very difficult thing to watch and even i find it difficult to watch mm. so how do you how do you bring it to the forefront of people's uh, consciousness without without making them turn away before they even yeah. you know, make I'm, that. I've been very mindful of that as well. Yeah. And I and I always thought it would be so, it would just be kind of cool. I mean, I have a creative background. I definitely am an artist. Both my grandparents uh, actually won from, uh, from London. Um, have always been very creative so it's kind of the sanctuary how cool would it be if gen animals if there was an interest you know in brushes if there was an interest mm. for this big to paint and stuff how cool would it be that if she could become a painter and people could could suddenly look at pigs in a different way and then through the inspiration of wanting to watch this pig in a different way ultimately work it backwards and realize where she came from and why she's painting in the scheme of the of the bigger picture and the mission and the reason why she's painting and and you know fortunately for me you know i did throw in the, the brushes amongst with other toys to keep her entertained um she did show interest in the brushes it was almost like divine intervention the way mm. this project went um, she was she she wanted to pick up the brushes she wanted to paint she still wants to wants to walk up to a canvas uh, whenever it's presented to her so she's definitely the boss and I just think it's a wow. great way to to highlight something and to to show a connection in a different way and it, and, it, and it makes people look at farm animals in a different way I mean the only if you think about in today's world the only time we really get to see farm animals is in the supermarket in which mm -hmm. they they sliced up and we have absolutely no connection or understanding of where that that they they come from um it's all part of a, the the strategic marketing of these companies and also um you know the only other way we see farm animals is in adverts and newspapers for how you know what they're setting for in these in these supermarkets so it's just a different way to hone in the story of reminding people that behind what they're eating is actually the life of a um, an animal that is actually very intelligent smart mm -hmm. perhaps very creative and to just to be in just a, to to inspire a positive awakened connection in order to 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 get back to the message of make a connection realize what's going on get educated and and be inspired to make make compassionate choices because ultimately you know nobody would endorse the cruelty that's happening and mm -hmm. it's very easy to turn away but hey you know we're all better we're all going to be better off if we if we face it and and, and inspired to live a life that follows our intrinsic values of of loving animals mm -hmm. for sure i mean and the, the the actual creative um process itself the, the nitty-gritty of actually creating work with with her i mean i mean there, there was one part on the the video where you um you said you know her eyes are like human eyes um and i noticed that you know that video i sent you recently where we, we just chanced upon um some free-range um pigs trotting around and i got really it was the first time i think i'd seeing a pig after all of this you know and seeing your video and, and and working with with the videos and whatnot and and actually really look deeply into this pig's eyes and they are it's like sheep's eyes of like how pupils that are kind of 
vertical and black, obviously because the pupils, but they, but with, they are they are like humans. I mean, do, what have you kind of learned by working so intimately with Picasso about her behavior and her, her, her creativity? Yeah, Scott, you make a good point. It's almost scary looking into um, into Picasso's eyes, into any of the pigs at the sanctuary's eyes, actually. Um, they are very, very human, and you really mm. realize that they are beings, you know, mm. they are, they, they have eyes and they're looking around and they're thinking and they are all individuals. It's amazing. You know, people mm. often, you know, it's, it's hard to actually fathom the billions of farm animals in the farming industry. And, you know, I think that the mass number and the scale that we talk about, it's hard to actually look at an individual because mm. you look at those yeah. numbers they're too big. And I have the, 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 the privilege actually of, of, of having a, a handful of pigs at the sanctuary and looking into their eyes and realizing that everyone is an individual. Everyone mm. is one. Okay. Mm. And yeah, that yeah. one, you know, Picasso cares deeply uh, that she's alive. She loves her life. She loves to paint. She loves to lie in the, in the hay. She loves to eat all day and, and sleep and the, do what she wants, you know, like many of us do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not that I, I have much time to sleep, but um, <laughs> Um, so, you know, I just, I think, I think the, the, the great thing, the, the, what's wonderful for me in, in working with Picasso and obviously having these other um, farm animals at the sanctuary is to, is to realize that they're all different. I mean, yeah. every single pig that we have at the sanctuary, Picasso is very gentle. She's very soft. She's very, um, she drives me crazy as well. She's very slow. She's very stubborn and, and pigs do have a, have a reputation of being quite stubborn and yeah. they are. Um, and Rosie, who was actually rescued on the same day as Picasso, is uh, is completely opposite. She is a food monster. She will eat anything that comes her way. She bullies the other farm animals. Uh, she doesn't bully Picasso, though. These are, everybody respects that Picasso is the boss. Wow. Um, but completely different personalities. And and the other the, the other pigs also, in different ways, very different. And you realize that they aren't just, it's not just 70 billion farm animals and they, they, they've got dead eyes and no soul and, mm. and and they don't care that they're alive or, or not and stuff they they absolutely have a they, they they enjoy waking up they enjoy the sun on their backs they enjoy living and they all have mm. a have a have their own reason for being okay like we all do and so yeah that's just been another I mean I always kind of know that I always felt that um yeah. I've always I've always had that but I mean just to be around them in the sanctuary and it's really I just feel totally honored and privileged that I have the opportunity to have to have the sanctuary and and the the joy and satisfaction that it brings to know that uh, okay I can't I can't obviously have seventy billion farm animals at the sanctuary but um that I that I have a handful that I that I that I know um have amazing lives and and in my own little dream world this is how I wish the world would be mm -hmm. and it and it still it still feels um really unique the the prospect of um seeing a, a pig painting. It, it still I haven't seen anything else, even when I've, I've kind of Googled to see for, find other information about uh, you guys and what you've been doing. There just doesn't seem to be that it is a totally unique thing that you've got with her, um, which is which is, yeah, it's a privilege for all of us to see it, not, not just for yourself working with her. Um, I mean, the, the, only, the, the interesting thing <clears throat> I found, <clears throat> and it's a little bit like just talking about vegetarianism or veganism, is that the reaction of your friends, family, and you, you kind of the wider circle and how they react to things that you've been sat with and uh, for, for a while. And I think, for example, with um, wanting to work with your video and, um, and just presenting that as a prospect, um, uh, there was a, oh, well, I saw that and I just thought, you know, it was just, um, and I'm sure you've heard this loads of times before, but, you know, it's just taking advantage of the animal and you're making money from, from, from Picasso just for your, for your greater, greater gain and, and all this kind of thing. I mean, what do you, I mean, that, that can't be an unfamiliar thing to, to be mentioned. How, how do you kind of, how would you respond to that? Because I think it was almost the video that we promoted through the organization that we voted for, they, their gut instinct was, well, we can't really support that because of not necessarily their reaction, but the wider reaction. So uh, give me a, a good old uh, argument back because we know it's not true, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. So, so, so that, that's, quite a, that's actually quite an easy one for me to answer. Basically, um, 
uh, Picasso is part of a, a nonprofit organization from Sanctuary and stuff. And uh, I've always said it's mission first there. I, I set that up. Um, I use my own funds to obviously set it up and I rescue farm animals. Mm -hmm. The purpose for Picasso painting is absolutely for to inspire people to look at farm animals differently. It actually, mm -hmm. if you look at it, it's a marketing, it's a mar it's a marketing approach because yeah. if you, uh, um, Picasso has reached millions of people. Um, yeah, yeah around the world and stuff through that, which she wouldn't have, if she, she wouldn't have reached without painting and stuff. The proceeds from the sale of the artwork go towards the sanctuary. Picasso sustains all the rescue operations, all the veterinary care, uh, all the food for the farm animals. And remember, this is a long-term project. I have, mm. I have a number of cows at the sanctuary that will live till 30 plus years of age. Picasso with God willing will live as long as possible. And maybe mm. that's still 10 years of, of, of age she is an industrialized pig she's been genetically compromised she's now six years of age so hopefully she got another four years and and um she may wake up tomorrow and she doesn't want to paint and that's also fine with us and that's what it is so so this is a long-term project it's a um it's a registered charity the funds go to it and sustains all of our things in addition to that it is not if Picasso were to uh, wake up tomorrow morning and decide she doesn't want to paint again and stuff, she would still be treated the same way. She doesn't, uh, she doesn't, she gets the same food, she gets the same treatment. Um, there's never been a time where she doesn't want to get up and paint. Okay. Yeah. And people, I, I don't, okay. So that's the first, that's the, there's a number of arguments to counteract that. The other thing is I don't do public demonstrations. If it was entertainment mm. and, a, and, a, and a bit of a circus and stuff, I would invite people to come and watch. I would pay, I would make them pay to watch and stuff and would have a good old time. It's not entertainment. It's mm. not, um, it's not to, um, it's not to entertain people It's to inspire people to think differently. And, um, I have, um, on a personal note and stuff, I've, I've basically given all my time and, and a lot of my personal finances in order to establish this. Yeah. And I, I just think that it's, a, it's just a very clever and great way that people can donate, make a donation yeah. to a sanctuary and get a painting in return. Okay. Mm, for sure, so yeah. that's a bit of a, that's a bit of a ramble approach, but I, um, um, yeah, I, um, as I say, it's a very sincere, dedicated uh, a project and, um, and um, I would, yeah, if, yeah, and, and it's funny because circuses are my, are probably my biggest nightmare besides uh, animals and entertainment is mm -hmm. probably the, the, the biggest nightmare for me besides um, obviously uh, animals being, being raised for, for being, being sold in uh, being raised in factory farms so to even to even um even related to entertainment yeah. kind of gives me goosebumps but yeah i'm sure at the end of the day um it, it I, I suppose um you know it, i do want people to see a pig painting i do want them to 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 be inspired to watch it and i do want them to get the message behind her artworks and and mm. i think that is um the fact that she enjoys it and that she willingly does it is the most important factor mm. in this and stuff and she would be she would be treated exactly the same way if she didn't paint and have you got any other animals in the in the sanctuary that are showing kind of artist chops at all? Or no, I, I, will, I will tell you one thing that I that because I know how how um, a wonderfully intelligent and creative farm animals are. Um, I don't think I, I don't think it would. It is definitely possible that one one more could paint. And people often ask if I'm going to um, you know work with another pig to 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 uh to inspire another pig to paint for example um I th for me um as a creative i don't plan to to uh work with another pig at this this stage i want to be i want to i take the time that i have with picasso be grateful for for this moment because yeah yeah for sure um, because I, I i'm working with a very for, with a wonderfully incredible pig and um i want to just try and, and savor the moment because it's not going to be forever she isn't going to last forever she isn't going to live forever neither am i and I want to just be grateful for this time and um and also there's no guarantees that even if another remember I um I encouraged and and work with Picasso to pick up a brush I never 
could never teach her how to paint. Mm. Um, she has developed her own style. She's definitely creative. She does circles. She does amazing, yeah, yeah. Um, um, amazing. Uh, work. But there are other there are other animals that paint, and you could argue. I mean, maybe it's subjective, but I would argue objectively that you can see that she has a style that is definitely um, commercially interesting. For sure, um, yeah. That people find um, it's not a mess. Like 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 I don't want to judge any other work, but you could say that she there's definitely artistic movement in her artwork mm. so there's no guarantees that even if another animal were to paint that it would be as inspiring as Picasso's mm. artwork so to cut a long story short they definitely smart enough uh, to um, where I could get another um, animal to pick up a paintbrush and walk towards a canvas mm. whether it be as inspirational as Picasso's I'm not sure but yeah, now yeah. I'm just living the dream with her yeah, and exactly. I'm grateful for it and I'm and I um, I'm inspired by what she does and I'm just trying to uh, inspire in my own little two pennies worth um, mm. in, in in the same way that you are Scott just trying to um, um, live our um, our passion and our our, um, our uh, way of trying to trying to sh show uh, to to inspire people to, to do things differently mm. um, and 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 um, and to help animals you know mm. I've got like two more little questions and then um I, I'll, I'll leave you in peace i'm really grateful for all the time you've, you've given well everything really even the, the i mean the, the fact that the video is doing so well now is because you see picasso painting straight away it's just it's such an unusual thing to see um and it is sparking off conversations about eating meat which i'm really pleased about and i think the more this manifests over the over the, the week-long national vegetarian week i think the more it will it will happen and um, so yeah i'm grateful for your time on that but I, there was and two questions i wanted to ask you um and it's it's, uh, it's on uh, the subject of picasso so um you've obviously you've just slapped a g in there and 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 now um even when you say picasso it sounds like picasso which is i just think is is, is genius in its own its own right i mean how have you been like has these like the picasso estate spoke to you have you spoken to them is there any kind of dialogue going on there between you and, and, and Lord <laughs> now are you really gonna put a spanner in the woods god come on <laughs> um no so <laughs> no they haven't um and maybe that's a good thing um mm. You know, I think everybody sees uh, Picasso's artworks differently, and I don't know if they would ap uh, appreciate the uh, simulation, the um, similarity in names or not. So no, I haven't called and asked them. Um, and the name Picasso, you could argue it's a little bit corny. Um, but no, no, I don't think um, it is. I think it's but, but at the genius. same time, it's also it's also a very it's it's commercially appealing. And at the end of the day, I go back to the point and stuff is that um, this is. This is a this is a way a catchy, catchy, uh, creative um, and very serious project to attract people and mm. to inspire people. So, yeah. Um, All right. I, I thought that might be. A, I, I, I was desperate to ask you. I, I, I but I I think that for, for what it's worth, um, and we talked about this when I when I first spoke to you when you were on your way to the sanctuary from from Cape Town. Um, that I strongly believe Picasso would be utterly inspired by everything that you're doing because it 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 it's on the same uh, it's underpinned by the same kind of thought process that you know you spend your life trying to to draw like a child you know you're trying to stop your um, your 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 own background your own training getting in the way of of a pure form of art which is exact it's almost I feel like. Picasso is achieving a, a higher level than Picasso was able to do because Picasso was Picasso and Picasso. Well, I, have... I tell you what, Scott, we could we could speak about this for hours because there are so many interesting discussions around what you've just said and about this kind of discussion. And in fact, uh, the cool thing is we've written a book. We have a British publisher. It's going to come out next uh, next year. And I talk a lot about these similarities with Picasso and how do you relate Picasso's artworks to the existing uh, uh, to to modern art and to our, yeah. to uh, Picasso's artworks. And there are so many fantastic discussions about it. 
I just have to mention a couple of things on, on the Picasso story. So first of all, Picasso did a range of very simple line drawings um, of mm. animals, by the way, yeah. and, and he did a penguin. And Picasso, my Picasso, has also done, uh, also painted a penguin two years ago. And I, I, tell you, I get goosebumps do, talking about this because I actually have both of the artworks framed in the sanctuary now. And I actually challenge people that are looking at the two artworks because it's two penguins mm. and they actually face each other. Okay, right. Picassos and Picassos. And they are almost identical, really? all right? And if you ask, I ask, uh, the 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 message in the in the barn is I don't say who did which one I basically say who guess which one each one did yeah. okay and I can guarantee you that if, if the average person who would look at that who didn't know who just looked at that would probably my Picasso's penguin as simple as it is 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 complex it's a little bit more sophisticated than Picasso's uh, penguin. Both are wonderful paintings, but it just goes to show how it's uncanny how similar mm. how similar it is. And I can actually email you both paintings if you'd like to see. Yeah, yeah, can, yeah, because I can put them on the video. That's a great idea. The yeah. other the other wonderful thing is Congo, the chimpanzee, who was a chimpanzee that was raised in the London Zoo in the um, in the late sixties and seventies who up until end of last year, unfortunately to uh, Congo's legacy, but Picasso sold the most, uh, Congo was holding the record for the most artworks ever sold by a non-human animal right. for $25,000 for three artworks that sold 2005. Picasso beat that with a painting that was sold to a German buyer for $27,000 at the end of last year. But the reason I'm telling you that is not to boast about Picasso and how much he sold a painting for, but, but Picasso, actually owned an artwork by chimpanzee uh, Congo and was a huge fan of chimpanzee uh, um, of, of, of Congo. So Picasso loved animals as well. He, mm. he painted these lines of animals. He owned an artwork by, by Congo. And it's just a wonderful story, actually. And I, and I do, I, I would agree with you that I think that Picasso would would find um, a lot of Picasso's artworks very inspiring because she does do these these very simple line drawings of animals, and I think he would find it very interesting and uh, to observe. Um, and then last, a slightly different subject and stuff. What I also people sometimes say, well, you know, how can Picasso? Does she really know what she's painting? You know, the art's kind of good, you know, really good. But you know, I always see people challenged by they love the artwork, but but wait, it's 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 not by humans. So uh, is it art? Uh, uh, should I say that I like it? And they go through this this internal discussion, cultural conditioning of what they're supposed yeah, yeah. to like That's or exactly what they're what it supposed is, yeah. to eat, and all these conversations come into play. But what I love about Picasso, what I always say, um, is that Picasso's art is truly Picasso's in the moment. She's painting in the moment. She is not. She is not projecting uh, what she's learned, what she, what 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 she's trying to paint. She is a spontaneous completely in the now. feeling, and and her mood at the moment is spontaneously um, um, projected onto this canvas with no with no learning or or or, or learn training or how mm. to paint or whatever. I think I would argue she's the only artist on the planet today that doesn't isn't hasn't been influenced by another artist or by another a trained conditioning. Um, and it's ultimately what people are always aspiring to be. Yeah, is exactly. To, is to be living in the moment, to be completely in the moment without anything. And Picasso is is actually actually in a position to actually to um to share that and to mm. to is actually what many of us aspire to 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 do and to be i mean i think the interesting thing about that is you, you're talking about arts as a visual a visual thing um and i was thinking while you're talking that well how would you apply that to music because on that basis if we've got Picasso and a, and a piano and she started hitting the keys and the keys were making like amazing discordant things with no potential rhythm or shape or structure that could be amazing but then I'd like well no that would be unlistenable and then you go <laughs> well, yeah but listen to bird song you know or whale sounds or their I mean blackbirds singing it's, it's, it's just utterly beautiful so yes I think art print painting and music um and maybe even film I don't know but there's 
there's an awful lot I, I think what, what you're what you're saying is an awful lot that animals have to offer that's not just um on their dinner plate for one to put it crudely but also just creatively um and I suppose yeah you're right P people but then it's their own filter isn't it they're kind of going well how how should I respond to this piece of work because if I think it's great and actually it's an animal then that discredits my judgment which it doesn't because you because that's not how art should be interpreted anyway but art is a bit like that um, anyway well, um, yeah, that, well, they're, uh, absolutely. And, you know, art's supposed to be controversial and art should have a message and people will say this. And I, that's what I, at the end of the day, whether people like it or not, I think it is serving a fantastic, a wonderful purpose. And that is starting a discussion, mm -hmm. whatever that discussion is. You know, I often say, you know, bringing it back to, let's bring it back to Picasso again. If somebody, if you went to a dinner party and you had an original Picasso on the wall, okay, yeah. What would the conversation really be at that dinner table? Uh, they, the, someone would say, ah, look at my wonderful Picasso. And everybody would, wow, that's incredible. Okay, this guy's obviously loaded. He has a lot of money. <laughs> we won't touch this painting, okay? And the conversation would probably move into something else. Yeah. Put a pig Picasso on the wall. And someone says, ah, look at this Picasso. Um, yeah, I, uh, this is by a painting pig in South Africa. They'll go, oh, get out of here. There's mm. no way. And then he would get out his phone and he would show a video of Picasso painting this artwork. And what discussions would flow from there? Would it be discussions on, is it art? Is it not art? How, how did a pig manage to do this? Why is a pig painting? What is the, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, so many discussions. And then obviously bringing it into, you know, what's being served at the dinner table for the next mm -hmm. kind of awkward moment amongst other things. So, so many, so much more as a discussion point, so many more discussions can be had around a Picasso. Um, if you look at what, what, art is intended to be in the messaging and and I, I just I just think she's completely Picasso's artworks are, are ticking all the boxes of of what of making people ask what is art uh, mm -hmm. who is an artist um, what is the purpose of art and starting the discussion of actually having meaning behind it behind it behind it as well so mm -hmm. so many different discussions to have around uh, analyzing Picasso as an artist and why she's painting and what is she painting and all this kind of thing and and um, it's just part of the journey really. Um, are we right for time? So one, I've got one more question you've made me think of. Are you right for like another five minutes? Sure. All right so on your thank you on your uh, website you talk about NFTs and you're talking about what is art. Um, I mean what can you just explain Picasso NFTs to people that don't probably know what NFTs are for a, for a start, but then how well, actually, actually, I'm definitely not an expert in NFTs at all. It's a uh, uh, non-fundable tokens. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's not saying that I'm that that Picasso and I are very queued up on. We've been approached many times to do it. Mm. Uh, we haven't launched them yet. We are planning to launch them in the uh, in the near future. Um, for me, it's just another way for uh, her message to be uh, um, um, presented to a wider yeah. audience. Um, and at the end of the day, this is a, a, a PR and marketing uh, campaign as well uh, sure. for, to inspire people, as I've said a mm. hundred times in this interview, uh, to think differently about farm animals. So we grab those opportunities. Mm. Um, if they do well and they sell, it's just great. It's more funding for the organization, which is a sure. great thing if they do well. Um, the awareness that's created through them is fantastic. I know there's going to be people that say that the, it's very, um, um, it takes a lot of uh, energy to produce these NFTs. It's not very um, uh, climate friendly. Um, is the, what, what is the word I'm thinking of? Uh, whatever. Um, uh, uh, anyway, but the point is the the ultimate benefits of the the PR awareness and potential funding that can come back to the organisation, how we can use that to to spread the message and to inspire people is is far greater than the negative uh, impact of creating of minting those NFTs. So yeah. it's just weigh, weighing it up and and uh, on that level. But yeah, it's just uh, again just another channel to to broaden her awareness and her appeal um, for the benefit of the of the purpose behind why she's painting. Amazing. Well, I'm, I've, I've badgered you with enough questions there. So thank, thank you for all of your support with, with this project. Um, and uh, enjoy your break in the south of France. Um, nah, thanks, Scott. We'll, and we'll and by the way, else. you know, you, you say to me, you know, do I have time and all this kind of stuff? I just think what you're doing is amazing as well. I think you have 
um, your story is very similar to my story mm. in, in a way and stuff. I was, I was, um, I grew up raising so, so much money for SPCAs and, and at local animal shelters. And I remember when I was 16 years of age in the school campus uh, ground, my best friend and I were sitting having lunch and I lived on uh, cheese and ham sandwiches, uh, two of them every lunch break. And I, my friend sat me down and said, Joe, it's so crazy. You raise all this money and save all these dogs from your local dog shelter, but then you sit and basically eat a pig at every lunch. And yeah. I was like, and I sat there and I thought about it and I realized actually in that moment, how you've got a good point. <laughs> and I said, well, I, it was the easiest thing to do. I never, I've never eaten animals since. And it really mm. was not a difficult discussion. It was a, it was a no brainer. And I couldn't mm. believe that I had never actually thought about the fact that, Hey, I mean, I'm eating, I, I'm really trying to save dogs all the time. And, yeah. um, and I'm eating pigs all the time. And actually, if you speak to a lot of the Asians, dog meats actually taste better than pig meat. So right. there's no, you're either eating animals or you're not eating animals. And, yeah. and it was, it was such a great, it was, it was, it was, it was such a simple conversation and it was a mm. life changing conversation for mm. me. And, and, um, and uh, that's what it was. It and I think, it was grainer, but, but it's, I think, I think because, I think it's going it, to, I do strongly believe that um, there's going to be a point where people will just stop um, because there's just no, because I, I think the, the, the tip will, there will be a tip. I don't think in even 50 years time, people will be eating meat anyway for, for loads of reasons because of the environmental okay. impacts it has, the health benefits of not eating meat. And I think, I think that's where, the changes are going to take place. I, I think, unfortunately, no matter how many times you say, yeah, but you're loving animals, but you eat them. I just don't, until everyone in the room is saying that and there's one person talking into a, a, a ham and cheese sandwich, I don't think that's going to change. But I think the environmental side, um, the evidence of that, you definitely feel healthier um, as a result of not doing it. Um, so I think I think it will change. It's just, it's just... Well, it's, it's, just not having, it's just having middle ground dialogue as well. So you have to have empathy with the farmers um, and uh, even the abattoir workers. You have to you have to see it from their viewpoint um, and then be able to try and rationalize the argument and try and see it from both sides. So you have to sit in the middle. I think the problem um, and, I, you know, you mentioned Earthling Ed to me and I kind of digested all of his content and he he argues his case really articulately and really intelligently and really calmly, but he, he's still, I feel, very far one side and then you've got the chairman of the NFU on the other and I just don't think, I just don't think they're capable of talking to each other um, because both arguments are valid. You know, there is an impact on uh, people's well-being, uh, uh, businesses' well-being, it's just true. Um, and it, that has to be taken into consideration. And the next interview that I'm having is with Richard, um, Brooke, who's the CEO of um, uh, the Vegetarian Society. And we're going to talk about that um, in more, in kind of more depth, really, um, because that you do have to have an open dialogue and be sat in the middle. And that's what that's the genius of what you're doing, really, because you're not going stop eating pigs. You're going look at the amazing things pigs can create if you just let them. And then, and, you, and if you still want to eat one, then okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you know it's just it, uh, uh, you know ultimately we live in a world where where you can you can eat what you want almost okay right. so no point telling people that you, that you can't do it or you're an you know you're a beep 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 if you if you do it and stuff you it, it's just it just doesn't work so um it, it's just it's just reminding people and I and I and like you say I do I think there is definitely hope um I think it's going to come more from it's just the world cannot sustain mm. uh, the, uh, the way it's going. It's the same with with fossil fuels and it's the same with how we drive vehicles and things yeah. like this. There is a there is a there is an end point to this. So yeah. I'm 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 personally um, excited about that prospect um, more than anything else. I think that's where the change will come. I don't. Um, uh, yeah, I guess it's it's just it's it's cultural condition is is deeply ingrained, mm. and also it's very difficult for a human a human nature is difficult to make changes. Okay, because mm. we all get in our ways. So it is that that from that side, it's it's more challenging. But you know, like like your music and like Picasso's art and stuff. You know, I think we we all feel better just moving the direction of yeah. feeling like we're making a, a difference in our own sort of way. I mean, we had someone, we had a kid come in the barn. 
um, a couple of months ago, and it, it kind of honed it in for me. Uh, he, he came, he, his parents drew, drove him a long distance to get to the to the sanctuary because his hero is Picasso wow. and he he spent some time um, uh, uh, a small kid very cute a very engaging smart boy and eventually I said to him well what did you have for breakfast and I could see his parents go <laughs> and he says oh I had bacon and eggs you know kind of you know before we came here and I said oh so you had a little bit of Picasso for breakfast and he looked at me like what on earth was I talking talking about and um I said yo you had a little bit of Picasso he says no 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 but bacon is small and and really? this and Picasso is so big and I said I said yeah but that little piece is also it comes from a, a a part of of one of Picasso's friends and he thought about it and and I could see at some at one at some point a few seconds later he got it mm. he didn't actually know that bacon came from a pig and and it was just about making that connection and yeah. I can assure you that he never will eat bacon again and accomplish on that day <laughs> that was just you know that's when that's when I look back look up and I think you know what I'm I'm so glad to this is this is why Picasso is painting is is mm. moments like this is like, Picasso won't change the world and people are going to carry on eating bacon and, and, and ham and stuff until until such time, hopefully, that it's not sustainable anymore. But 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 you know that that boy's life, Picasso's uh, um, purpose in that moment was to this this kid will will grow mm. up and he will probably one day, hopefully, he will be in his own interview and he'll talk about the time he went to Picasso as a kid and he realized that what he was yeah. eating came from this amazing animal and so who knows oh, it's, one, it's well. one little it's little drops that make up the river that make up yeah, for sure one day all right well that, amazing Th thank you so much for your time um and uh hopefully this isn't the last time we speak i'm sure there'll be something else we can cover in a few months time as you as you go on to do other amazing things um so have, have a great thanks, uh, break and uh, thank you thanks a lot scott good luck right. yeah Bye. cheers ciao eh? bye